A very upset looking man is at a meeting, but doesn't seem involved. He's zoning out the entire time as the other board members fight amongst themselves and yell at each other. The man, Aditya, gets up, stares at himself in the bathroom, and leaves the office. He doesn't speak to anyone and quietly gets into his car. He finally reaches a wedding venue and quietly enters. He looks at the bride as if he is in pain. The groom greets him happily as soon as he arrives, but Aditya ignores him and leaves. The bride is none other than his ex, who dumped him. Devastated, he walks alone on a road without paying attention to anything. He gets onto a train to return to his hometown. On the train, a girl runs and tries her hardest to get in. She throws her luggage on the train in haste and gets on. She giggles and tells everyone that she's fortunate she caught it on time, talking about how she's so clumsy that something weird always happens. All the passengers give her an odd look due to her hyper and bubbly antics. The girl, Jeet, stands beside Aditya. She asks him for his ticket, but he doesn't listen. She finally shouts at him to get up, and Aditya does so. They're heading to Bethinda, and Jeet cannot shut her mouth. Aditya starts suffocating because of how much she's spoken, but she finally gets up and leaves. He gets out of his seat and heads towards the exit. He becomes depressed and is about to jump, but Jeet stops him. She thinks he's mute and deaf because he doesn't say anything and continues chattering. The ticket collector comes in to take his ticket, but Aditya has yet to respond. Jeet starts using sign language to ask him for his ticket, and he finally speaks, saying he doesn't have a ticket. She convinces the ticket collector to give him a ticket since Aditya would pay for it. She goes on to make a story about how Aditya has been through a lot and cannot process it, which is why he's like a statue. Unbeknownst to her, that's true. She asks him what's wrong and even inquires if he's on some substance. Aditya immediately denies this, and Jeet asks him to tell her everything. She continues irritating him, and he finally snaps. He shouts at her to shut up because he isn't interested in talking to her. She doesn't say anything even when he insults her. He feels terrible for it and apologizes. He tells him she understands he's upset, but it doesn't offend her because she's excited. She's planning to elope with her boyfriend because her family disagrees with their relationship. Aditya is stunned at how much Jeet can speak without stopping. She goes on and on for hours and even talks while asleep. She wakes up in the middle of the night to find Aditya gone. She goes to check on him and sees Aditya walking alone. She shouts at him, saying he will miss his train but Aditya ignores her. She screams at him, but he ignores her. Finally, she gets off the train to get him back, but he brushes her off. She gets annoyed at him and tries to get to the train alone, but she trips and misses her train. She's unfortunate and upset, so she starts yelling at Aditya and blaming him for missing her train. She calls him a weird psycho for making her miss her train, and Aditya loses it. He tells her he didn't ask her to do all this and tells her to mind her own business. She becomes furious and tells her he's a self-centered bastard and that she lost all of her luggage because of him. He has to get her back home safely with all her luggage. She tells him she will not leave him alone until he does so, and he runs for his life. She chases him, and he gets a cab. He asks her to come in, and they tell the driver to get them near the train, but the driver doesn't care. He starts driving slowly, saying they won't catch up with the train no matter what. Aditya is hell-bent on getting rid of Jeet, so he gets in the driver's seat and speeds up the car. The driver screams at him to stop, but Jeet cheers the driver begs them to stop, but he doesn't. Eventually, Aditya manages to catch up to the train, and the two run for their lives without paying the driver. The driver chases them, asking them for the fare. Aditya tells Jeet to go since the train has stopped. She agrees and promises not to bother him anymore. The driver catches up to them and yells for his money back. Aditya agrees to pay, and even lends Jeet some money to buy a water bottle. Just then, Jeet realizes that the train has started moving. She runs after it once again, but misses it. She doesn't know what to do anymore. She goes to the officer there for help, who tells her that the ticket collector will leave her luggage at the next stop and advises her to pick her stuff up. Some goons see Jeet alone and wait for her to leave the office. But the officer there starts lecturing Jeet on how she shouldn't be traveling alone because she's a girl, and being young doesn't excuse her behavior. She screams at him badly, and even the goons get scared. As she's waiting for a ride, the shopkeeper from before comes up to her and taunts her for missing her train. He offers her a place to stay the night, but Jeet screams at him, too, for trying to take advantage of her. They start teasing her, and she walks away. The goons from before start following her again, and that's when she runs out of the station. But she doesn't realize that only pleasure givers are standing at the side of the road. 
A young man also thinks of her as a pleasure giver since she's standing with the rest and asks her to come with him to spend the night. She tells him she's not a pleasure giver and walks away, but he follows her, saying he'll pay however much she wants. Jeet starts to get anxious, but sees Aditya walking away in the distance. She runs up to him, and the goons leave her alone. She hugs Aditya and thanks him for saving her. Aditya is shocked to see her there and scolds her for missing the train again. She tells him about the goons, and they finally introduce themselves. She asks him to help her, and that she will leave him when he drops her home. She tells him about her plan to get her stuff back, and Aditya cannot comprehend it. He's irritated by her and glares at her, but Cheat doesn't care. Aditya has no choice but to follow her. They finally arrive at a hotel, and the front desk man thinks they are there for pleasure. Aditya tries to clear up the mistake, but Jeet doesn't understand. She tells him not to pay for a whole day. Since they're not staying anyway, Aditya decides to shut up and just let people assume whatever they want. The front desk manager teases Aditya and tells him, all the best, thinking they're a couple. Aditya says thank you before going to the room. She tries to threaten him, saying she knows karate and that she won't do anything with him. Aditya laughs as Jeet tells him about her boyfriend, Anshaman, whom she loves a lot. Aditya also tells her that he has only ever loved one woman. He realizes that Aditya is upset because his girlfriend dumped him. She asks him to tell her everything about their breakup and continues pestering him. As Jeet gets a matchstick, Aditya remains silent and asks him to burn his ex-girlfriend's photo. Aditya declines, but she persists, saying he'll be relieved. Aditya reluctantly agrees because she doesn't leave him with another option. Aditya starts feeling better and tells Jeet about it. She cheers and tells him he will get someone better soon since he's rich and good-looking. Aditya blushes and thanks her for it. She makes him laugh, and Aditya asks her why she loves herself so much, only for her to reply that she's her favorite person and loves herself for how she is. Aditya smiles and tells her he only wishes to be as self-confident as her. She even tells him that she'll act as his wingwoman from now on and find a beautiful girl for him. Aditya agrees, but then they hear police sirens Police barge into the hotel to raid it. She doesn't know what's happening, but Aditya drags her out, and they flee through the back door. They hide in an isolated bus and pray to God to avoid any more trouble in their path. Aditya tells her that the bus will leave at 6 the following day. They're both unable to sleep, and Jeet continues talking to Aditya. She goes on to ask him if he thinks of her as attractive. Aditya doesn't know where she's getting it, but says he finds her beautiful. She tells him that she has a cousin, Rup, who's just like her, and if Aditya finds her attractive, he'd love Rup as well. She even asks him to elope with Rup. Her and Antimon, and Aditya laughs at her excitement and plans. Aditya teases her, saying he wants to marry her, but Jeet tells him that she'll always be with him anyway if he marries her cousin. She even proposes that the four of them live together in the mountains. He tells her she's trying to set her sister up with him, and Aditya asks her if she's always like this, having a crackhead personality. She tells him she's always been this way, she asks him to come to Bethinda because everyone there is like her. Aditya smiles as the morning arrives and the bus leaves for their destination. The two become close friends during this ordeal, enjoying their journey together, singing and dancing. They travel through cities and even go shopping together. He finally manages to get all her stuff back from the train, and the two decide to continue their journey to Bethinda together. They have snacks together and rent a jeep to go to Bethinda, but the jeep breaks down in the middle of the road. Jeet drops all her luggage in the jeep and asks the driver to come to Bathinda to drop off her luggage. The two decide to hitchhike and meet many people along the way. They dance and sing on their journey, stopping multiple times. Aditya feels a lot better as the two continue along. The two rent a cabin to continue on their journey. Aditya and Jeet stop and sit at the lakeside to relax. They talk about their lives, and Aditya tells her that he's always wanted to be a musician, but had to give up his passion to run a company. She tells him he still has time and should become a musician since everyone has the right to live their life however they want. She believes that if you want something a lot, the universe does provide it to you. Aditya tells her that he's given up and stays silent. She proposes that they jump into the lake, but Aditya starts panicking. He tells her she needs a psychiatrist and that he doesn't want to jump, but Jeet pushes him into the lake anyway. The two have fun and finally return to the house to change their clothes. Aditya then tells Jeet He's the son of a great late industrialist of India. His whole family owns multiple companies and empires, and now Aditya is the head after his father perished. She cannot believe him and asks if he's telling the truth. Aditya agrees, and Jeet asks him 
if his mother did run away with another man when he was just a kid. Aditya becomes uncomfortable, and Jeet apologizes. Aditya tells her that the news of his mother running away is accurate, and he's always had difficulty accepting that. He continues that his mother was a disgusting, cheap woman who left her whole family for another man. Jeet asks him not to speak of her that way since she's his mother, but this gets Aditya riled up. He adds that she deserves it for stooping so low and destroying his whole family. He tells Jeet that he's always had to be embarrassed because of what his mother did. She tells him not to get angry and to understand his mother since she must have been so in love. Jeet continues, saying that people don't think when they're in love and that there's no good or bad in love. Aditya asks her not to say such things because it's a hoax. She agrees and begins cracking other jokes to make him feel better. She tries her hardest to get him to marry her sister since he's so rich and innocent. Aditya laughs at this and compliments her, saying she truly is one of a kind. They finally reach home the next day, and Jeet asks Aditya to join her family. He tells her it would be awkward and that he better get going, but Jeet doesn't let him. She drags him out of the car, making all sorts of excuses. Her family happily accepts him and brings him in front of Jeet's grandfather, who seems very strict. Jeet's grandfather asks about Aditya, and Jeet tells him that they're just friends and that Aditya was the one who actually saved her and brought her home. She persuades her grandfather and talks about how she was alone and anything could have happened to her at night. But Aditya brought her home to safety nonetheless. Her grandfather thanks Aditya for protecting her. Jeet's grandfather hugs him and tells him that he has to stay with them for a week so that they can show him their gratitude for helping Jeet. Aditya reluctantly agrees. Jeet's family sits him down and starts feeding him endlessly. Aditya asks Jeet to save him since they're all shoving food down his throat. But instead, Jeet encourages them to feed him even more to make him healthy. Jeet's mother drags her away to talk to her at night. Aditya walks down the corridor, groaning because he's eaten so much. Jeet's brother, Amrik, tells him it's all right and that he'll get used to it. Suddenly, Jeet comes and drags Aditya away. She tells him there has been an emergency, but Rup walks in on them before she can talk and asks what's going on. She uses this opportunity to introduce Aditya to Rup. She even tells Rup to run away with Aditya. Rup berates Jeet for not thinking before speaking. She turns to Aditya and asks him to meet her the following day to discuss something important. Aditya agrees, and they all go to their rooms to sleep. In the morning, Jeet and Aditya meet in the fields, and Jeet tells him that Manjit, her childhood best friend, is coming. She continues that she and Manjit have been best friends ever since they were kids because Manjit's family is close to her family. Her parents decided to marry her to Manjit since that's what they had always planned. Everyone thinks they'll be the perfect pair, but she's an adult now and doesn't think of Manjit like that. She tells Aditya that her family has almost fixed her marriage to Manjit, and she doesn't want that. Aditya understands the whole story and asks Jeet what she wants. She tells him that she is eloping with Anchaman. Aditya tells her that it's a bad idea and that she should introduce Anchaman to her family. She tells her they'd never agree since he's not of the same caste. Aditya gives her many options, but Jeet claims they will need to be changed. The next day, Manjit's family arrives, and Jeet's family welcomes them with open arms. Aditya silently observes everyone. Aditya even tells Rup to stay away from him, because he doesn't want to give anyone the wrong idea. Instead, she pulls him closer to tease him. Rup catches them together again, and Aditya runs away. He goes up to meet Manjit and chats with him for a little while. Their families are pleased and excited to see them talk so freely. Jeet's grandfather calls for Aditya to join them and hesitantly agrees. Aditya is introduced to everyone as a singer. They urge him to perform a song for them. But Aditya hesitates. Jeet's grandfather tells him to sing and showcase his talent. And Aditya agrees since there's no option left. He comes to the center and begins singing. Everyone is impressed by his singing. And Jeet is shocked to see him sing so well. He even starts dancing. And Jeet's family joins in. They're all enjoying the song and dancing. Jeet's grandfather and Jeet join in, too. Everyone dances around, but Rup senses something going on between Aditya and Jeet. They finally end the song, and everyone applauds Aditya's talent. After the celebration, Manjit tries to talk to Jeet, but she sees Aditya in the distance and runs towards him. She sees Amrik and lies about their father calling him, so she can be alone with Aditya. She sees Manjit looking at them and kisses Aditya deliberately to make it look like they are having an affair. Aditya tries to clarify to Manjit that there is nothing between them, but Jeet pretends to be surprised that Manjit has caught them. Manjit ends up thinking they love each other and storms off, even when Aditya tells him that this is all Jeet's plan and that he doesn't love her. At night, 
Jeet sneaks into Aditya's room to tell him she's running away since Manjit doesn't want to give up on her. He tries to stop her, saying it is a bad idea, but he refuses. At last, he realizes he would be fine if he ran since no one knows his true identity. He decides to run away with Jeet, and the two try to sneak out quietly, but Roop catches them. Jeet begs Roop to be quiet, but she screams and calls everyone. Aditya drags Jeet into the house again, since no one would suspect them of being there. Everyone thinks they ran towards the main road, while the two quietly hid inside the home. Jeet's grandfather berates everyone for giving Aditya shelter, which he believes caused their love to blossom. The two stay inside the home as Jeet's family drives into the city to look for them. Once the house is empty, they run away in the opposite direction, and Aditya asks Jeet where she will meet Anshuman. That's when she tells Aditya that Anshuman doesn't even know she's running away, but it's just her gut feeling asking her to run away because Anshuman would accept her right away. Aditya is shocked at Jeet's confession and yells at her for not thinking anything through and playing with her life. But Jeet doesn't take him seriously. Jeet's family tries to call the police, but they can't find Jeet anywhere. Her mother cries, thinking their family's honor has gone down. Aditya tries to tell Jeet that life isn't always easy. Sometimes, you must be severe and struggle to get what you want. But Jeet says no one knows the future, so one should do what their heart desires. Aditya, although reluctant, understands and runs away with her. She assures Aditya that she'll return as soon as she marries Anshuman and begs her family for forgiveness. She doesn't know if she should take this step, but Aditya tells her it's too late to back out, and she must see what happens to her future. The two start their new venture and go to Manali, where Anshuman is. Aditya realizes he's slowly falling for her, but doesn't say anything. They finally reach Manali, and Jeet sees Anshuman. She asks Aditya to meet him, but he declines and bids her farewell wishing she would always be happy. Aditya leaves, and Jeet runs towards Anshuman. Aditya smiles, reminiscing his moments with Jeet, and returns to his hectic life. He takes over the company once more and announces to everyone that their company has been doing poorly since his father passed away. He apologizes for leaving without notice, but assures everyone that he'll take the company to new heights and do anything he can to get it back on its feet. Everyone is happy to hear this. They all thought Aditya would sell the company because he hates business. Aditya goes into all the board meetings where everyone criticizes him for being careless, but Aditya takes on Jeet's persona and just cheerfully handles everything. His mother, whom he used to hate, is also at the meeting since she co-founded the company. He tells her that the company has no relation to her personal life and that he'll always keep that separate. He asks her to take over the company since she's worked very hard for it and forgives her. His mother is shocked and doesn't say anything. All is going well, but he is unable to forget Jeet. He even introduced a brand new project named after Jeet. His project skyrockets and his interviews are broadcast on the news. Jeet's family sees the interview and goes to his company the next day. They try beating him up, but the security stops them. Aditya begs them to listen to him. It's been months, but Jeet hasn't returned home. Everyone thinks she is with him and doesn't believe him when he says otherwise. Jeet's uncle screams at him and calls him a traitor for betraying them. He accuses Aditya of murdering Jeet since it's already been nine months. Aditya tries to explain the whole story, but they don't listen. Aditya realizes something must have happened since Jeet never planned to disappear. Aditya tells them that Jeet is with him, and he'll bring her back to Bathinda in ten days. The very next day, he leaves for Manali to find her. He meets Anshuman and thinks Jeet and him are already married. He politely tells Anshuman to go to Bathinda with Jeet because her family is distraught. Shockingly, Anshuman tells him that he doesn't know anyone named Jeet. Anshuman confesses that he did not intend to marry Jeet and never asked her to run away from her house. Aditya asks him how he could do this, to which he replies that Jeet is crazy and childish and he can't live with someone like her. Anshuman tries to defend himself, but they get into a massive fight. Anshuman tells Aditya that he never even talked to Jeet about marriage because he didn't want to settle down with her. Aditya screams at him for being irresponsible because Jeet hasn't come home in nine months and no one knows where she is. Aditya runs out to look for Jeet and Anshuman feels guilty about his actions. When Jeet finally meets Anshuman, he scolds her for her behavior and completely rejects her. He yells at her and they get into a fight. She cries and tells him she's left everything for him, but he doesn't care. Jeet tries her hardest to convince him, but he leaves her stranded. She is devastated and realizes that what Aditya said was all true, and she should have listened to him. But Jeet doesn't give up and stands outside Anshuman's house for days so that he might change his mind. But Anshuman kicks her out and tells her he wants nothing to do with her. 
She leaves crying with no idea what she will do next. Eventually, a nun finds her and offers her shelter and a job. Jeet starts working as a teacher in a convent school. She lives in the hostel there, but she's completely changed now. She doesn't smile or have happiness in her life anymore. She can't even go home and has no one to look after her. She calls Anshuman, but he yells at her on the phone. Adichie finally tracks her and is stunned to see such a changed person. He observes her for days and his heart breaks when he sees Jeet hurt and in pain. She finally sees him and pretends to be happy in front of Aditya. He tells her he's hurt that she didn't even try to contact him once or tell him about the betrayal. He then asks her to pack her bags and leave with him, but she refuses. She tells him that all these are the consequences of her actions and she'll live through it. But Aditya disagrees. He's adamant about taking her back. He tries to take her back, but Jeet tells him to leave. He tells her he'll leave her with no chance, just like she did to him. Aditya tries to grab her, but she screams at him to go away. And just because Anchorman rejected her doesn't mean she'll start loving him. Aditya still doesn't give up and tells her he doesn't expect anything in return. He begs her to come with him and tells her that she's the one who gave new meaning to his life, and it's her who did favors for him. He tells her he's more successful than ever because of her, and every time he looks at his success, it reminds him of her. She finally agrees to go with him after listening to him. They both get in his car and stay in a hotel for the night. She is very depressed and doesn't talk at all. The roles are completely reversed in contrast to their previous experience. Aditya is the one who tries to cheer Jeet up now as she's upset about her breakup. He makes her laugh and tells her the whole ordeal in the hotel. She realizes she's been so dumb and naive and starts sobbing. She regrets everything she's done and expresses her grief to Aditya. She asks him what else she can do to win over Anshuman. To which Aditya says, kick Anshuman out of her life. Aditya tells her that Anshuman has happily moved on and doesn't even think of her anymore. He urges her to move on and tells her he has met Anshuman. Aditya tells her to forget Anshuman since there's no going back. But Jeet doesn't want to accept that. He asks her to call and insult him, saying she'll feel better. He calls Anshuman and asks her to curse him out. He takes the photo and hesitates at first. But Aditya encourages her. She finally starts and gets agitated. She calls him all the names in the book and curses out his whole family. Aditya cheers, and Jeet laughs as if it made her feel better. She thanks him and hugs him tightly, which brings out their inner feelings. They both embrace each other and realize their feelings for each other. Things get awkward, so Aditya tries to defuse the situation. He goes out of her room while making all sorts of excuses. He cheers her up and even encourages her to eat. The two of them decide to make the best out of their situation and plan to explore the whole place while they're there. The train is about to leave, so they run towards it and almost miss it. They finally get on the train, and Jeet asks if he likes her. Aditya confesses that he does like her a lot, but would never force her to reciprocate his feelings. He tells her she doesn't have to like him back and just be happy. They get off the train and enter a hotel. Coincidentally, Anshuman is there, too. He runs towards Jeet when he sees her and requests her to talk to him just once. She tells him there's nothing to discuss and she'll never bother him again. Anshuman apologizes for his mistake and tells her he didn't have the guts to marry her without his family. He tells her he'll go with her to Bethinda, talk to her family himself, and ask for her hand in marriage. Jeet tells him that it isn't so easy and it isn't fair. But Anshuman begs her to give him another chance, which confuses her. She runs to Aditya and tells him everything. She tells him it's too late, and he doesn't know what to do. Aditya asks her to listen to her heart and do what it says, or else she'll regret it for the rest of her life. He asks her to do what feels right. She asks him what he will do since he loves her too. But Aditya smiles and tells her he has her memories. He continues saying that two people should only get married if they love one another. Jeet feels bad for Aditya as she knows how much he loves her. But Aditya tells her it's all right. He takes her hand and drops her off with Anjuman. Aditya calls Jeet's family, informing them that she's coming back. Everyone is excited, and they hold a large celebration to welcome her. Roop and the entire family embrace and kiss her out of excitement. They all shed tears of joy. Aditya gets welcomed, too, and everyone there thinks Jeet and Aditya are married. They happily welcome Aditya as Jeet's husband, and Anshuman is stunned to see that. He and Aditya both cannot say anything out of shock. He tries to tell her family, but they're too happy to listen. Anshuman is upset and offended to see everyone love Aditya so much. Roop asks them to hold hands as they enter the house, but they're too awkward. Anshuman follows them quietly. Jeet and Aditya are sent to meet her grandfather.
Jeet's grandfather berates her for running away, and says that he already knew this was all Jeet's idea since Aditya is too innocent to take such steps. Jeet nods and apologizes for hurting her family's feelings. Jeet's grandfather forgives them, and orders Jeet not to repeat such mistakes. He agrees, and her grandfather warns Aditya to take care of Jeet, as she's very naughty. The whole family rejoices as Aditya pulls Jeet away, and tells her to confess everything. Anshuman walks up to them, and asks them what's going on. Aditya tries to explain the situation, but Jeet's cousins pull him away to snap pictures. That's when Jeet's father and uncle come up to Aditya and ask him to get married to get into their rituals to make it official. Aditya doesn't know what to say and tells them to ask Jeet about it. They agree, thinking Aditya has no problem with it. Aditya goes to Anshuman's room to talk to him, but Anshuman bursts upon him, saying this isn't fair, and he's supposed to be Jeet's groom. Aditya tells him Jeet is handling it, but Anshuman disagrees. Aditya tries calming him down, but Anshuman is enraged and curses Jeet's family. Aditya somehow gets Anshuman to calm down and not create a scene. He is finally ready to tell her mom about Anshuman, but she hesitates as she doesn't know how to reveal it to her family. She decides to rest for a while before telling everyone. Meanwhile, Jeet's family fixes her official wedding to Aditya after two days, and everyone starts celebrating by dancing and singing. He sees how her family is so happy and rejoicing, even after she's made such a big mistake. She also realizes her love for Aditya, as he's been there for her the whole time. At night, she goes up to Aditya and tells him she never had the guts to tell her family. She adds that telling them about Anshuman was a mistake, and she couldn't bring it up. He seems stressed, so Aditya cheers her up and asks her not to worry. He asks her to talk to Anshuman so they can confront the family together. But just then, Rup and her sisters come in and drag Jeet away, saying the groom cannot look at the bride before the wedding. Anshuman wakes up and asks what's going on. Aditya tells him about his conversation with Jeet and urges him to meet her early in the morning to make a plan about confronting their family. Anshuman gets pissed off and goes back to sleep. Aditya and Jeet look at each other with love and distress in their eyes. The following day, Aditya asks Anshuman to talk to Jeet nicely. Pete arrives just then, and Aditya tells her he's leaving soon. He tells her to wait, but Aditya tells her that things will get more complicated. He smiles, and Aditya wishes her a happy married life before walking away. Anjuman tells Jeet that it's no problem if Jeet hasn't told her family yet, and they can go now and confess to her family together. He urges her to tell her family that all the celebrations will be the same, but only the groom will be different. He tells her to confess to her family about their love story and how long they've been in love. As Anjuman talks to her, Jeet remembers all her moments with Aditya and how he's always stood beside her. He was even ready to sacrifice his love for her. She realizes that Aditya is right for her and runs after Aditya. Anjuman tries to stop her, thinking she will confess to her family about them. But Jeet runs towards Aditya. Aditya sees Jeet running breathlessly, so he asks her what's wrong. That's when Jeet asks Aditya if Anjuman's coming. When Aditya says yes, Jeet does the same thing she had done to Anjuman. She hugs and kisses Aditya in front of Anjuman and confesses her love for him. She sobs and tells him that he's the right man for her. She thanks him for showing her the right path. Anshuman realizes the love Aditya and Jeet have for each other. Aditya and Jeet finally kiss, and Anshuman goes away devastated. Aditya rejoices that they're finally together and spend the rest of their lives happily ever after.